Secretary Reed, House Bill 495. House Bill 495, a representative Hill, the 22nd, and others. Bill to be entitled an act amend Article 2 of Chapter 16 and Title 50 of the OCGA which is relating to state properties codes so and the modified provisions related to conveyances of state property in consideration of conveyances by the General Assembly and for the purposes. The Senate Committee on State Institutions and Property recommends this bill do pass, spec which amended Senator Alberts, the 56th District Chairman. That completes order, Mr. President. Chair recognize Senator Member 25th. Present the bill, even though he wasn't waiting at his desk. Thank you, Mr. President, and I do apologize. Um, I'm bringing to you today House Bill 495, which is a, a fairly simple department bill for state properties. But I would uh, like to, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, a gentleman who is no longer with us that got this process started, and that's uh, Representative Calvin Hill of Canton, Georgia. Uh, actually, most of you remember he uh, passed away earlier this year with leukemia, but uh, we've been working on this language for a couple years now, and, and, uh, <clears throat> and obviously um, condolences go to the family and uh, for all his fine work that he did on, on this bill. This bill um, will basically allow the state properties. Currently, we have a surplus of property in the state of Georgia that in order for us to market it and potentially sell it, we always have to wait until uh, we convene legislatively during in every session, which can be a process that could be as as long as 520 days, and that's just not uh, very um, uh, easy to do. So what this bill will do is properties that are $500,000 or less in value, appraised value, the state property commission will have the authority to uh, market and sell that property. Uh, without us having to convene each year. So uh, if anybody have any questions, I'm, I'm open. Uh, Mr. President, I do yield the will. You do have a question. Chair recognize Senator from the 41st. Uh, Senator, do you, do you have any uh, knowledge on about how many properties a year are uh, in that category of, uh, of under 500,000? Well, uh, no, sir, I don't. I do know I was involved in, in earlier this year in uh, the Fall Line Freeway down in uh, Baldwin and Wilkerson County, which is a perfect example of a piece of property that we negotiated for several years. I know we negotiated in the two years that I've been in office, and that was a piece of property that uh, it was negotiated down to a number that was under um, $500,000. Uh, which um, I think it was 491 was the exact number on that. But um, uh, that was a good example of a, of a piece of property that we had to wait till, even though all parties involved, state property was ready to sell, the two counties had the money to sell, we had to wait until we started legislative session in order to make the deal finalized. So, but as far as the number of properties that might fall under the half a billion dollar mark, no, I don't know. Thank you, Senator. Mm -hmm. Chair recognizes Senator from the 33rd. Senator you. Yes, sir. Isn't, isn't it true? I hate to ask you these questions on this bill, but uh, it seems like they've given you another one. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let me ask you, are you familiar with the conveyance bills that come through here that we are notified of when there's a conveyance of property from the state to our counties and they list the counties so that we can see them yes sir and uh, which is a courtesy and many times that happens in fact it has a, lately they've been doing a real good job of that are you familiar with that yes sir are you familiar with the fact that if we take the general assembly out of the process of being notified or and or voting on the on the uh, conveyances uh, is there a chance we might not really know what happened in our district or some, some property described in our district that maybe could embarrass us? No, sir, because the way this is set up is anything over $100,000 in appraised value, all parties that are going to be impacted, meaning us as state senators, state house members, the president, uh, the, the governor's office, as well as the speaker of the house, will be noted 30, 30 days in advance. And then if, if any one of those people that I just named have a problem with a potential sale, they have the right to, they actually give them veto in power and give him the ability, 
give them the ability to bring it for the full body to let the full body decide. For the yield. Yes, sir. Uh, so you're telling me, is it not true that you're telling me that when a, a senator will be notified or a state representative will be notified 30 days in advance of the conveyance, and if that senator representative objects, <clears throat> they will hold that until the full General Assembly meets or until the uh, board meets on the, uh, on the conveyance on the state properties committee? Until the board meets on the conveyance of state properties. That's so right. in effect, we don't have a veto power. Uh, of any kind. Well, we can object to it, to it until it comes to the full a full body, full board, not us. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and would you look on page one? This is something you may or may not be aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very familiar with it because the Western Atlanta Railroad is mentioned, Atlantic Railroad is mentioned, and those leases. It seems as though, are we? I'm sorry, still got a glasses problem. It it seems as though those leases are at least a quarter of a century long. And that's one thing that's precluded us from being able to put any type of uh, transit or, uh, well, right. one, one is because of the busyness of the freight tracks, but uh, uh, is that provision there, what is that doing? Is that allowing them to make all decisions on that particular item? I don't believe so. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it pertains to, to that portion of it. Um, I think it just obtains the properties outside of the, the, the rail properties there. For the, one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, isn't it true? I did look through it, and, and I, I would like to ask you, please, to look through it carefully and follow it because we stand the chance sometimes of a long-term lease losing the availability to negotiate with the railroads to use the line. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, I'm afraid it, it, it may have that effect. Uh, so I'd ask you to please be diligent uh, and get back with us on that and let us know as it progresses through the process. Right. Well, I, and I will. I appreciate you. I appreciate your comments. Leave it there. Chair, recognize Senator from the 56th. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the Senator yield? Yes. Senator, is it not true that after a long amount of work, we assured there's great communication for all members of the executive and legislative branch. This will reduce bureaucracy and ultimately save the state and taxpayers money? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, uh, Senator. As you well know, we've, we've worked on this for, for several years now and, and tried to iron out as many of the details as possible uh, where most all parties can be satisfied and, and with your leadership along with others. Uh, I think we've got to a point that will uh, make it a little bit of e make it easier to, to do business, particularly real estate transactions here in the state. No further question. Thank you, Mr. President. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? Agree in the Porter Committee, which fail pass the bill. Chair, here's none. Porter Committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? Chair is none. The main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? Questions on the pass of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary, unlock the machine. On the pass of the bill, the yeas are 50 and the nays are zero. And this bill, AMC Reps Constitutional Majority, is therefore adopted. Secretary will read House Bill 770. 
House Bill 770 by Representative F. Stration, the 104th, and others. A bill to be entitled an act of Chapter 7 of Title 16 of the OCGA relating to damage and intrusion of property, so to create the crime of home invasion and for their purposes. The Senate Committee, Senate Committee on Judiciary Non Civil recommends this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted Senator Stone of the 23rd District Chairman. The Judiciary Non Civil offers the following substitute to House Bill 770. A bill to entitle an act of Section 1511 2 of the OCGA relating to the definition of juvenile code, such as bribe for a crime of home invasion in the first degree, to be Class A designated felony act, and the crime of home invasion in the second degree to be Class B designated felony act, and for the purposes. That completes your order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the distinguished senator from the 6th. Present the bill. Thank you for waiting at your desk to be recognized. Following the rules. How about that? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, today I bring before you House Bill 77, 770, and this bill addresses concerns raised by judges and prosecutors uh, regarding the burglary statute by creating a new criminal offense of home invasion. This bill uh, isolates the most serious offenses, which is a policy that is consistent with the criminal justice reform uh, that we recently passed. It also cl closes a loophole that currently exists in the burglary statute. Um, current burglary law does not distinguish between unoccupied and occupied homes. It also doesn't distinguish between offenders entering to commit a theft and armed intruders seeking to commit a violent uh, offense. This bill will isolate the most serious cases, distinguishing violent offenders from nonviolent offenders. Passage of this bill will allow for the reduction of sentences and the greater responsibility, uh, or the, excuse me, the greater possibility of parole for nonviolent offenses, which again is consistent with criminal justice reform. Um, you know, y'all may ask, why do we need a new offense? Uh, think of it this way. We have existing crimes for entering auto, which is a property crime, and we have a different crime for hijacking a motor vehicle, which is a crime against that person. In the same way burglary is a property crime, home invasion is a crime against the occupier of the home. Um, if there's any questions, I can go through the bill, but uh, this, is a, this is a good bill, and I ask for your favorable consideration. Chair recognize Senator from the 39th for a question. Will Senator Yield? I will. Appreciate your vote on this, and uh, committee. I, I, I appreciate. I, I appreciate you appreciating it. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> if the senator will yield, I will. Okay. Let me ask you this. It's. It's. And correct me if I'm wrong. To the layperson's eye, and I think. Uh, well, I know I'm a lay person. You may be a lay person. I don't know if you're a lawyer or not. But isn't it true that the offenses that we are now dealing with under this law, really burglary and an aggravated assault, I mean, aren't those the two components now that are involved in this kind of activity, breaking into a home with violence, using well, a burglary, dangerous weapon? Burglary is, is, a, is a crime against property. And... Um, and then assault would be a, the crime against a person. So, sort of, yes. But okay. will the senator further yield? Yes. What is the what is the uh, sentence now for uh, aggravated assault? If you know the answer, let me know. I, I don't have that right here. Well, that's fine. Uh, does it? In, well, will the senator further yield? Yes. Does it include a mandatory minimum for aggravated assault? Uh, I'm does not sure. Senate, does a sentence for aggravated assault include a mandatory minimum? No. Okay. All right. And will the senator further yield? Yes. Um, uh, are you aware that some of us have had concerns about mandatory minimums, like the one that's included in this bill? There has been some talk um, over mandatory minimums, and I would like to, um, to, to uh, talk about that for a few seconds. Okay. Um, 
there is a minimum in this bill. But the minimum for home invasion, does, well, first of all, this can be probated, allowing the judge to sentence the defendant to probation rather than prison. So while there is mandatory minimums in this bill, uh, there are opportunities to um, you know, plea down lesser offenses. Will the senator further yield? Yes. That being the case, isn't it true that while a judge may be able to probate a sentence, otherwise the mandatory minimum uh, is in place uh, and uh, cannot be paroled or otherwise uh, uh, provide the judge with discretion in terms of sentencing? Is that correct? Correct. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There's no Ch other. Chair, yeah, unfortunately, there are, Senator. Be calm. Sen uh, the chair recognizes Senator from the 35th. 35th. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the Senator yield? Yes. Isn't it true that um, I, have a, I had a bill just like this that I introduced last year because the marshal that lives in my community was at home unexpectedly and someone uh, knocked the door in, came in and, and attacked her when they found out she was there, stole all her guns and almost killed her? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not surprised mm -hmm. a senator of your stature put mm -hmm. forward a bill with this content. Yeah, and it's almost exactly word for word. And isn't it true that my bill didn't even get a hearing in committee? But I am so glad that, that I don't care. No pride of ownership. Let's do something about this. And I, you will have my vote. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate it. Chair, recognize Senator in the 41st for a question. Senator Yield. I will. Um, isn't it true that uh, referring to some of the concerns, Senator, from the 39th, when the original bill it had a uh, lines 29 had that it restricted and shall not it shall not be suspended, probated, deferred, or withheld in any way these penalties. So you're telling us this that section was taken out, and now these penalties could be put on probation. Well, probated. The, excuse me. Yeah, th th this bill is. Um, you know, was perfected through the House and the, and the committee process. So if some changes were made, it was a, a collaborative effort to make the bill stronger. Well, Senator, I guess the question I have, and possibly one of our attorneys could come help out on this discussion, uh, is the fact that if you conv get convicted of entering a home with a deadly weapon at present, a home invasion, or another standard that is brought out in this statute, would there be mandatory minimums under the present bill, uh, under present standing law, or would those crimes be probated? I'm trying to decide whether or not this is actually giving any more discretion than presently exists to judges or not. It is certain that the original bill, you know, did not do that. This bill takes into account reforms we made under criminal justice reform. So uh, we tried to create the opportunity to, for, for judges to prosecute and, uh, you know, very violent crimes and, and, and have some mandatory minimums, but also have some discretion if discretion was available. So this bill does allow for some discretion. Chair recognizes Senator 33rd. Senator you. Yes, sir. Senator, if you'll look with me on. Oh, God. Excuse me. Sorry. If you'll look with me on page four, at the top of the page, subsection five, in section five. Any crime involving trafficking of cocaine, marijuana, or illegal drugs provided in what code section 16-13-31, and which crime is a felony, commits a felony, shall be convicted for 15 years, shall be sentenced for 15 years. Do you read that? I do, yes. That has no discretion in it, does it? Not in this case. So, further you. 
Senator, do you know how many cases are made against young people uh, who have marijuana and probably ought to be arrested or taken to jail, but are you a little bit concerned because uh, about the penalty for that with judge not having any discretion and the, the uh, it just strictly says 15 years. I know of young people that could be in the same car and catch this kind of sentence. So are you not a little bit concerned about that? I, I, I agree there's some concern. That's not what this bill addresses, but that's a larger issue in our criminal code that um, is, is an issue uh, worthy of debate. Senator Further you? Yes. Is this new language? No. The current law is, is just as this reads? It is. If you'll flip okay. back to page three, you'll see where we added home invasion mm -hmm. into the bill. That's the new language. Okay. For, yeah, one or two more questions. Maybe friendly, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> I know we have crimes as it relates to breaking and entering. We have crimes listed for criminal trespass. We have crimes listed. It might not be in, but it's in Title 16. Uh, we have crimes for assault and battery, and then we have aggravated assault. I guess what I'm asking and wondering, did those crimes not delineate enough as to the seriousness of breaking and entering, and that's the reason that you put the first, second, and third degree in there? Uh, yes, Senator. If I may, can I give you an example um, how this might be effective? An offender enters a home without authorization in order to commit an armed robbery. The homeowner attempts to defend the home by opening fire on the intruder. The intruder flees without taking any property, which is a necessary element of robbery. Uh, without home invasion, the offender could only be charged with burglary or criminal attempt. Uh, neither of these offenses carry the more serious sentence ranges consistent with other violent felonies. And so the, 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 the purpose of this is to um, account for the strong wrongdoing of that individual who never left with anything, but he, he took something from that person. Further you. Yes. And, uh, what is the maximum penalty for breaking and entering or a burglary? What's the maximum penalty? Is it a felony? For burglary? Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the maximum penalty? 20 years. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank you, Senator. If you would, when, <laughs> when I sat down, since we've got the sound maybe Hollywood, uh, a, lot of, a lot of signals going on. And I don't know whether he told you to slide into home or not. <laughs> but <laughs> let me ask you, if you will explain how this helps in the reformation of the judicial system as it relates to nonviolent offenders. I was very impressed with that part of the bill. And explain those parts of it to me. One more time, if you would. Why, wh where it is in the bill, too. Thank you. What was the question? Explain the non, where this bill applies to nonviolent offenders. In your presentation, you said that this is going to help uh, paroles and, and uh, uh, crimes for nonviolent offenders to be separated from some of these others. Is that not true? Maybe. <laughs> Are, are you telling me you don't remember if you said that? Well, I just, uh, that's not the main issue of this bill, but, it, you know, it is an aspect of that bill. It's not true. I just wondered where it was because that was the part that sounded valid and that, that, that I appreciate and would like to see. And uh, if you do run across it, would you let me know? I will. Okay. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Senator from the 45th is recognized. Will the senator yield? I will. Senator, is it not true that if you ask women what they fear, probably one of the number one fears that they think about is a home invasion. Is that not true? That is true. Is it also not true that in Gwinnett County in Loganville, I believe it was either last year or the year before, there was a woman who heard someone coming into her house. She went up into the bonus room and hid in the closet with her kids. And unfortunately, the, the invader came into that bonus room and she shot him. Isn't that a woman's greatest fear? Absolutely it is, Senator. Thank you. This bill directly addresses that issue. Mr. President, I'll yield the well.
Senator has yielded the well. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection? Without objection, the committee substitute is adopted. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? Grant a port of committee which fail to pass the bill. Chairs and other port of committees agree to. All those in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Stick to your unlock the machine. On the pass of the bill, the yeas are 44 and the nays are 6. And this bill, MC Rex Constitution Majority, is therefore adopted. <laughs> Secretary will read House Bill 838. House Bill 838 by Representative Tanner the Ninth and others. A bill to maintain an act in Article 3 of Chapter 11 and Title 16 of the OCGA relating to invasion of privacy is so prohibit the transmission of photography or video depicting nudity or sexually explicit conduct of an adult under certain circumstances. The Committee on the Senate on Judiciary non symbol recommends this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Stone of the 23rd District Chairman. Judiciary non civil Committee offers the following substitute to House Bill 838, a bill to entitle an act in Article 3 of Chapter 11, Title 16 of the OCG Air Land Invasion of Privacy, so as to prohibit the transmission of photography or video depicting nudity or sexually explicit conduct of an adult under certain circumstances and for their purposes. Amendment 1 by Senator McCoon of the 29th. Amend House Bill the substitute to House Bill 838 by adding after line 54, semicolon or 6, the transmission is made pursuant to or in anticipation of a civil action. That completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 45th to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Senate. I bring before you the substitute to House Bill 838. It also has one amendment on it. This bill, unfortunately, has to be brought forward. We have advanced in technology in the last few years, and that technology is great, but sometimes that technology is often used in bad ways, and that's what this bill specifically addressed. We, we have uh, noticed and, and witnessed an explosion in the advancement of technology. And this bill, unfortunately, when people use it, is called, and something that I had never heard of, is uh, a re revenge pornography and revenge harassment. And this includes the transmission of photography or video depicting nudity or sexually explicit conduct of an adult. It also includes the harassment and using it. The way it was explained to me was that if you are married to a person or you have a consensual relationship with an adult, and unfortunately that relationship breaks up and maybe 10 years later, at the time you had the relationship, you had video, you had photography, you had photos, but you get mad at one another and you use those photos or those videos against one another and oftentimes those photo photos or videos it's kind of hard to imagine this kind of stuff but they create websites against one another this would uh, uh, make that a um, high and aggravated uh, uh, conviction on the first offense and then guilty of a felony thereafter 
Um, I think it's a good thing. I, I think it sends a message that we shouldn't be treating one another against uh, each other that way. Approximately 15 states have already criminalized this type of behavior, and House Bill 838 addresses these concerns in the state of Georgia. Um, there is one amendment from the uh, Judiciary Chairman from the 29th. I agree with that uh, amendment. The bill does address a, a portion of that, but this makes it explicitly clear that if you're using these photographs or, or videos in civil action cases, that that would be excluded. There's also other exclusions. If you look on lines 46 through uh, 54, there's also uh, talks about investigation and prosecution of criminal offenses. With that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. No questions, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. I ask for your favorable consideration to the substitute and also to the amendment of House Bill 838. Senator from the 29th is recognized to speak to his amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. This amendment simply adds at the end of line 54, which is a series of uh, exceptions to the underlying bill, that uh, a transmission made pursuant to or in anticipation of a civil action would not be uh, prosecuted prosecutable under uh, under this legislation. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair recognize Senator in the 42nd for a question. Well, Senator Yield. I will. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, when we say in anticipation of, is this, for example, a transmission prior to a divorce <laughs> action or something like Correct. that? Questions on the adoption of the amendment uh, authored by the Senator from the first. Is there objection? Without objection, amendment number one will be adopted. Question now is on the committee substitute as amended. Is there objection? Without objection, committee substitute as amended is adopted. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? Agree in a portal committee which fail pass the bill. Chair is none. Portal committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair is none. The main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? Qu questions on the pass of the bill uh, before I open um, the machine? Uh, no. Well, that was a lot about nothing. All those in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. Passage of the bill. The yeas are 51 and the nays are zero. This bill, MC Rex Constitution majority, is therefore adopted. Secretary will read House Bill 843. House Bill 843, by Representative Riley the 50th and others, a bill to entitle an act amend. Title 47, the OCGA relating to the retirement and pension so as to change certain provisions to ensure compliance with federal laws and regulations and for other purposes. 
the Committee of the Senate on Retirement recommends this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Miller, Chairman. That completes order, Mr. President. Chair, recognize Senator the 54th to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, uh, House Bill 843 brings our retirement system into conformity and compliance with the Internal Revenue Service uh, Code. Uh, we have been, uh, we have received a determination letter for the uh, by the IRS. Uh, dependent upon these amendments, uh, it really just brings us into compliance with federal law. And if there are no questions, Mr. President, I ask your favorable consideration, and we'll yield the will. No questions, Senator. Thank you. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? Granted, the Porter Committee which failed to pass the bill. Chair is none. Porter Committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair is none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? Questions on the pass of the bill, according to Lindsey Tippins. All those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. Um, on the bill, the yeas are 50 and the nays are zero. This bill having to see records constitutional majority is therefore adopted. <laughs> Secretary will read House Bill 898. House Bill 898 by Representative Pack of the 108th and others. A bill to entitle an act of entitled 39 and 49 of the OCG early and the minors and social services respectively so as to repeal the interstate compact on juveniles enacted in 1972 entitled 39 and enact a new interstate compact for juveniles entitled 49 and for the purposes. The Senate Committee on Interstate Cooperation recommends this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Hardy Davis, the 22nd District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 23rd to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. President, Senators. HB 898 uh, authorizes Georgia to uh, re-enter the Juvenile Interstate Compact. Um, Georgia had been in the compact, which dated back to 1955 uh, for uh, most of that time period. Uh, when the compact was revised in 2011, Georgia didn't, excuse me, in 2002, Georgia did not join uh, and as a result Georgia has been left out uh, from the service provided that is the sharing of juvenile uh, delinquency cases from other states. Um, Georgia is the only state in the country that has not uh, entered into this compact. It, it's estimated that the cost of $27,000 a year to join the compact uh, will be more than offset by the savings because what is happening now, we are receiving, or juveniles are leaving their states that have jurisdiction over them and coming into Georgia, and we don't know about it. They get in trouble. They uh, end up uh, in our correctional system at a cost of uh, 80 or 90,000 a year. 
Uh, and we, because we're not in the compact, the other states are not required to accept them back. So this is a, a win-win for Georgia. Uh, I would urge your favorable consideration. And Mr. President, if there are no, object, no questions, I'll yield the well. We do have a question. Uh, Chair recognize the Senator from the 42nd for a question. Will the Senator yield? Yes. Am I correct that this merely standardizes the procedures and the requirements between a, a number of states with respect to juveniles? It does. It, sharing it, information and, and procedures for transferring back and forth between uh, jurisdictions. How, how does this relate um, to Common Core? <laughs> Uh, well, um, they both have C-O-M in the, <laughs> so there might be something there. No further questions, Senator. Thank you, Honor. Please, um, does any other, HB 898. <coughs> does any other Senator we speak for against the bill? Is there objection agreed to report a committee which failed to pass the bill? Chairs, none of the committees agree to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? Chairs, none of the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? Question on the pass of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary, unlock the machine. On the pass of the bill, the A's are 51 and the A's are 0. This bill, MC Rex Constitution Majority, is therefore adopted. The Secretary will read House Bill 911. House Bill 911 by Senator, by Representative Ballinger of the 23rd and others. A bill to entitle an enactment, Article 2 of Chapter 5 of Title 16 of the OCGA relating to assault and battery, such as and provisions re regarding regulation as an aggravated assault and for other purposes. The Committee of the Senate on Judiciary Non-Civil recommends this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Stone of the 23rd District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is the House even in session? Oh. They've been going home? Yeah. And we're still here taking up House bills. How many bills did they have today? Five, Five bills? How many do we have on our calendar? Yeah. Twice the number. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, have we got some adjournment uh, motions that are ready to roll? Oh, the senator from the 30th said after this one, okay? <laughs> Chair recognize senator from the 30th. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate you uh, settling with me through this one bill. It's pretty straightforward. It adds strangulation to the definition of aggravated assault. Uh, not going to lie to you. I thought it already was aggravated assault. That's all this bill does. Subject to your questions. There are no questions, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? Agreed to the committee which failed to pass the bill. Chair is none. Porter committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair is none. Main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? Question on the pass of the bill. All of those in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine.
Let the word go forth. This will be the last, this next bill is the last house bill we're taking up for the day. <laughs> Tell you what. On the pass of the bill, the yeas are 50 and the nays are zero. This bill, I'm saying, Rex Constitution majority is therefore adopted. Last House Bill of the Day, House Bill 985, the Secretary will read. House Bill 985, Bureau Representative Kirby, the 114th, and others. A bill to be titled Act, Amendment Article 2, Chapter 10 of the Title 16 of the OCGA relating to obstruction of public administration and related offenses, so to change provisions relating to false filing false liens or encumbrances against public employees and for the purposes. The Committee of the Senate on Judiciary Non Civil recommends this bill do pass. Pick away submitted Senator Stone of the 23rd District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes distinguished senator from Athens, Clark County, the senator from the 46. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, this is a bill that has come about as a result of people. Uh, particularly in the metro Atlanta area that have been essentially acting as squatters, filing fake uh, security deeds or property deeds with the Superior Court clerk, seizing possession of what are usually vacant properties, occupying them or even renting them out, and then when the true owner comes around, they find out that they're sitting there under what's referred to as a color of title. They're claiming that they own the property because they filed fraudulent deeds and this makes that a crime to fraudulently file public records such as real estate deeds and it allow for the prosecution of that so we can put an end to this activity. Mr. President, it's a very simple bill. I'll take any questions there may be or else I'll yield the well. No questions, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other Senator we speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? We're in the Board of Committee. Chair, Chair? yes. Um, Chair recognize Senator on the 15th. I just put consent to, uh, consent to excuse the Senator from the 33rd. 33rd, without objection, the Senator will be excused. All those Senators in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary, unlock the machine. On the pass of the bill, the yeas are 47 and the nays are 1. And this bill, MC Rex Constitution Majority, is therefore adopted. As I promised you, that was the last bill, House bill of the day. Chair recognizes the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Tuesday, March the 11th. 10 a.m. tomorrow, March the 11th. Read the announcements. Rules upon adjournment, 450 cap. Judiciary non-civil, 230 in the mez. Agriculture and consumer affairs, 230, 125 cap. State institutions of property, 230, 310, CLOB. Health and human services, 330, 450 cap. Transportation, 330 in the mez. Finance subcommittee, 330, 125 cap. 
State and Local Government Operations, 4 p.m., 123 CAP. Judiciary, 4 p.m., 307 CLOB. Science and Technology, 430, 310 CLOB. Finance, 430 in the MES. That completes the order, Mr. President. Should I read the 8 a.m. for tomorrow? Finance Subcommittee will be meeting 8 a.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, March 11, 2014, 125 cap. That completes the order. Mr. Remember, President. there will be some 8 a.m. subcommittee work do uh, being done tomorrow. If you're part of that, please do not uh, miss it. Need to get quorums at these committees. Any other announcements? Chair recognizes Senator from the 36th. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'd like to call your attention to a breakfast briefing in the morning on uh, diabetes uh, in Georgia. Senator Unterman and I and other women of the House and Senate on behalf of women in government are hosting this breakfast up on the fourth floor, uh, 450, 8 to 930. We'll have a legislator from Illinois sharing with us their experience on addressing diabetes there with the Diabetes Caucus. And I know many of you are members of the Diabetes Caucus, so we want to extend to you a, an invitation to please join us tomorrow morning, if you can, between 8 and 9.30, uh, before we come on the floor for a, a session around moving forward on the diabetes epidemic in our state. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? The majority leader has moved. We stand adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, March the 11th. All those in favor will say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Eyes no. clearly have it. We stand adjourned. Aye.